Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. I've been getting a ton of calls and a ton of excitement over the new Soundstream Reserve HDHU 14 SI radio. It's been a lot of questions, a lot of people want to know, should I buy the HDHU 14 Plus or should I wait, pre-order and wait on the new SI model? So hang out as we go over the options. I'm going to show you the features of both radios, what's the same, what you're going to add with the SI, and hopefully you can make a much better informed decision on buy now or wait till later. All right, so let me first by start and say this is an HDHU 14 Plus. I don't have an SI model here in my hands, but I do have video of it and the gauges on screen and a lot of data you need I'm going to show you later in the video. First, I want to go over all the things that are the same between both radios so you can hopefully make that informed decision on what's important to you. First off, they're both going to have an optically bonded screen, IPX rated, water resistant, just like the factory Harley radio. They're both going to have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's going to require you to plug into the stock USB port. Now, keep in mind, we do have wireless adapters that plug into that USB port to make it wireless, but neither model is going to have wireless built into the radio. They both have AM, FM. They both have a single USB factory input. All right, so when the HDHU14 came out, it had a 10-band EQ, but a software update brought it to a 13-band EQ adjustable high pass and low pass filters, adjustable slope of those filters, as well as a bunch of sub settings for sub level if you were to add subwoofers to your bike. Both radios will have that exact same graphic user interface, the same 13 band EQ, those same filters. All the things we've come to love about this radio are gonna be in the SI model as well. They both have the same internal amplifier and the same internal RCA output section. So if you were thinking that one's going to sound better than the other, they're the same radio in all of those aspects. So exact factory fit and size, complete bolt into those fact, that factory hardware, factory plug-in connectors for true plug-in play. The bigger difference is going to be when it comes to thumb control modules and some additional features. Now let's start with the HDHU14. So it uses a Skosh thumb control module. That module does a few things at the same time. It's gonna communicate with the CAN system and turn the radio on and off. That's all done by data on your 14 and newer Harley. But it also interprets that CAN data signal from those buttons and makes the radio do thumb controls. So on this radio, your left control does volume up and down. Right and left on that control is gonna do track forward, track backwards, or scan through your presets of your radio. Pushing in on it is gonna give you source change. On the right controls, we have volume up and down. We also have, if we press in, we added mute, which I really like. The factory radio didn't have mute. I love that feature to quickly turn it down because we build some very loud systems and you're gonna wanna turn it down to talk to somebody that's around you. So let's talk about what is added with the SI and what the differences are on things like those thumb controls. First off, we get a lot of questions about this. This is the IdataLink Maestro interface that the new SI is gonna use for thumb controls. It's gonna do a few extra things as well, but we're gonna start talking about thumb controls first. You have the ability to get the RR or the RR2. These are selectable. If you go to our website and you look at the radio uh, at volunteeraudio.com, you're gonna see that you can pick an RR or an RR2 module, and I wanna go over those differences with you. I'm gonna start with the things that are the same. So both of them are gonna allow you to do Thumb control, uh, the thumb controls can be set wherever you want them. So they're remappable is what we call it. So if you plug the RR into a computer and bring it up, you're gonna see it's preset with a whole bunch of things that just make sense. But with this module, one of the things that Maestro does that no one else does is you've got dual function thumb controls. So factory, there are 10 buttons. Those 10 buttons can do two separate functions. So you've got a quick press and a long press function. That means you could do a possibility of 20 functions. I don't think the radio really has that much need for 20 of them, but the main idea is it's more than capable and it's remappable to do whatever you want. So if you want volume up and down from both sides, you've got it. If you only want it on one side, you can turn it on to do that. It will have the ability to go into the info of the bike. Now, I don't want you to be confused. This is not the exact same info layout that is in the factory radio. This is gonna be the IdataLink Maestro Info, and there's two sections. So you're gonna to go to Vehicle Info, and from there you're gonna have gauges. You can do upwards of 30 different gauges. Anything on the data stream 
of that ECM can be made into a gauge and be viewed on screen of the radio. It does this five gauges at a time, and it does that only, and, and you're gonna ask, because I'm showing a video of those gauges, they're only gonna be mapped out in orange. So the gauges are orange because factory Harley gauges are orange. That cannot be changed. You can still change the button color on the side, but the gauges are gonna stay orange. But every one of those gauges are customizable in the sense that you can grab the gauge, you can select a new fit function. So maybe you want oil pressure, maybe you want air temperature, maybe you wanna see your O2 sensor to see if you're lean or rent rich, or you wanna see the map pressure from the manif manifold absolute pressure sensor. There's so many different things you can see there uh, from torque to acceleration. You can make a gauge for it, RPM, total speed, all of that can be remapped to anything you want. And like I say, there's over 30 options. I'm sure I missed a bunch of them. You also have another screen that you can go and look at the bike and it's gonna show you things like tire pressure if your bike has that option. It's also gonna show you if you have a check engine light. It's gonna, as you apply the brakes or the turn signals, you're gonna see that on screen. It's gonna show all of that data that it's there. So that is the same with the RR or the RR2. They both do all of that functionality. The RR2 is gonna add a few things. First off, you can connect to an RR2 through Bluetooth with your phone and you can make the changes like remapping the thumb controls. On the RR, you're gonna to have to actually plug it into a computer. It's a very simple process, but you do have to plug it in versus using an app on your phone. The RR2 has expandability, and I don't want that to be overtaken or overdone. What that means is right now, there is a set of relays or a relay pack that can do four functions that can plug into an RR2 that won't plug into an RR, and a later software update, it's not gonna be on the original release, will have the ability for on-screen buttons to control external accessories through this relay bank. So I know that was a lot of big words, all it means is we're gonna have some switches on the radio that when wired properly on screen will control other functions. People are like, well, I could do air ride. I hate to tell you, air ride takes six functions. Up and down in the front, up and down in the rear, kickstand down, kickstand up. So the four functions really aren't enough to do air ride. And I don't know if I'd want my radio doing my air ride anyways, but external lighting and other accessories can definitely be controlled. K40 has a radar detection system that's very cool that you can hide out on a bike that could be integrated into the radio with the Maestro RR2 and show on screen if the police are ahead of you or behind you, or what kind of alert right up on your radio. It also allows those alerts to come through the radio so you're a lot more likely to hear them as well as see them. So RR and RR2, RR2 is about $50, $60 more, adds that expandability of the relay pack, gives you the ability to do your programming or changing to the interface through your phone instead of a computer. All right, so I'm gonna go real quick recap. HDHU 14 Plus versus SI, they both have thumb control retention. They're both plug and play. The Maestro is gonna give you the ability to remap those thumb control buttons and has some future expandability options uh, as in integrated radar or maybe relay switches on screen and allows you to see gauge information on screen. Uh, I wanna stop for a second and tell you this. We've had this for a long time. We've had Maestro capability in the car and truck world. And we do Kenwood and Alpine and JVC radios that are Maestro compatible. And this has been a really cool feature that a lot of people have bought a radio for. But what we've come to find out is that first day or two, they look at it, they think it's cool, they show their friends, but then you're back to using it as a radio. So I wanna stop and say, if you're a Street Glide owner, maybe you own an Ultra, maybe you own an Electric Glide Standard or a Road Glide, um, I think the HDHU 14 Plus is a great solution uh, for many reasons. First off, it's about $300 less to go with the current model. And all you're gaining for that $300 is gonna be what we just talked about with the gauge information and remapping of the buttons outside of Sirius XM. So we've got Sirius XM capability in the SI2. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about the CVO guy. CVO guys, you've got Boom Stage 2. It's gonna cost you several thousand dollars to swap out your amps and speakers. A lot of you have a lot of you have already done that. You're very dissatisfied with the Boom 2 system. It's not loud enough, it's not clear enough, you're tired of blowing speakers, you've made that upgrade. If you've done that, then the HDHU 14 Plus suits you well as well. If you have factory Boom amps, Boom Stage 1, Boom Stage 2, HD Audio by Rockford, we're still learning about. I'm not positive, uh, I haven't got Maestro to tell me yet if it will maintain the Rockford amps and it doesn't say so on their site. So I think they're still in testing because it's new enough. We don't know that answer yet. 
I'm not gonna tell you it does or doesn't. We're just, we just don't know 100%. So if you have boom stage one or boom stage two, this interface is gonna keep those amplifiers working. The HDHU 14 plus does not. You would have to replace those amps with aftermarket amps. A lot of guys wanna do that anyways because it's a huge improvement. Um, the, the other benefit for both Street Glide, Electric Glide, Road Glide, CVOs, whatever it is you have, Ultra, uh, the Sirius XM capability. So some of you are just, you love your Sirius XM. On the HDHU 14 Plus, you're gonna do it through the app. So Apple CarPlay or Android Auto use the Sirius XM app. On the SI, we have a Sirius XM port for a dedicated tuner. So it will take an SXV300 tuner. You'll notice on the website, if you go to pre-order it, we have an option for you to select this. Now, one thing I really like about the tuner is Sirius XM is doing this huge push right now to get people, to get tuners in their bikes or their cars. They want more people subscribing. And so they've gave us an awesome deal. You're gonna buy this for $34.99 if you pre-order. You're gonna get a $70 prepaid Visa card when you activate it. <clears throat> You're actually making $35 to add the tuner for Sirius XM, which I think is an awesome deal. All right, so let's talk about the HDHU 14 Plus again. It's been out for eight and a half months. We have sold a tremendous amount of them. And I'll tell you, uh, Soundstream has got over 10,000 of these out in the field on Harleys, and they have held up phenomenal. People with non-touchscreen radios, GT radios, Sony radios, the 5,000 to 7,000, have upgraded and got huge improvements. And then our audio nuts have took their GTS out and put this radio in too, and still seen a huge improvement. Uh, in sound, in visibility. I think it looks better. I like the functionality better than even the GTS radio uh, at a much, much lower cost than, than to go back with that factory option. A lot of guys with police box and electric glide standards that didn't even have radios put this radio in. So you can imagine there's a ton of them out there. A bunch of guys have it. And all we hear is how happy people are with this radio. It's rare that there's been any kind of warranty issues and a few times there have been. Soundstream has been phenomenal to immediately take care of it, want documentation of what happened and they've tore the radios apart to try to make them even better to make sure we don't have any future problems. Now the SI, I don't want you to be worried. A lot of people go, it's gonna be a new radio. I'm not gonna get it till it's been out a while. Well, this one came to market and did great and we're using the same internals other than it's gonna have some hardware changes to accept the Maestro module. Now Maestro's been doing this for years and years and years, and they've already took the software, they've okayed it, they've looked at it, we know all of this is gonna work properly. And as you've seen from the video we've posted up as I've been talking, that it's in a bike, it's being used right now, everything's being tested so we don't have weird software updates and issues later that you have to deal with. I'm not worried a bit about this radio, the SI, and I'll tell you to the extent Volunteer Audio, my company's already pre-ordered 300 of them. So 300 radios that we took money out of our pocket and already bought, why did we do that? We did that because we knew people were gonna be excited, the CVO guys, and even the guys that just want every bell and whistle, we're gonna have to have this radio. And we put it up for pre-order on our website. That is not normal for us. We don't normally do pre-orders, but in this case, I wanna let you know, Soundstream has come to us and said, if you'll take pre-orders and you will pre-order the radios, we are guaranteeing you on the first shipment, all of those pre-orders will be fulfilled. So we had a week time plan to, to pick out how many we wanted. We bought 300. We set a 300 quantity in the website. So if you go there and you look at this radio, it's gonna say in stock, but you'll notice everywhere it says this is a pre-order. Don't get confused. You are pre-ordering the radio. It will ship in November. And so because they've guaranteed us that we will get, get them on the first order and we wanna quickly get them to you when they come out, we are requiring a full payment for those. It's our 24th year in business. You can check our reviews. We're not going anywhere. I know it's a lot of money, but if I took a deposit from you and then tried to contact 300 people to get the rest of the payment before we could ship, it would be a nightmare and you'd be upset because the radio came out and you haven't got yours yet. So we're requiring full payment up front. You get to pick a Series 6 M tuner and what Maestro module you want at time of order, but this is gonna make that process so streamlined when the radios come in so we can quickly get them out to you. You can get it in your bike. So. HDHU 14 Plus has been an excellent radio. If you're thinking about buying it, buy it. If you have a CVO, something with boom one, boom two, and you need that amp retention, this SI model is gonna be great for you. If you're stuck on having a standalone Sirius XM tuner, this is gonna be great for you. It's about a $300 difference. You'll have to weigh out in your mind is the ability to see gauges 
and Sirius XM worth a $300 additional charge. If it is, wait on the SI. If it's not, don't wait till then to then buy the HDHU 14 Plus. I'm just trying to clear it up and make sure you don't wait till midwinter when you could be enjoying an awesome radio right now today. So again, HDHU 14 Plus currently in stock, shipping from our website, volunteeraudio.com. There'll be a link in the description to it. There'll be a link to the pre-order on the SI. Again, if you pre-order the SI, you're paying for it now. It will ship in November, and whatever accessory you pick with it will ship with it too. Sirius XM, $35. You're going to get a $70 rebate, so you're making $35 to get Sirius XM, and we know we love the service. And if you do HDHU 14 Plus, just download the app. Do Sirius XM through CarPlay or through Android Auto. I hope, as long-winded as this has been, that it answered some questions, that it helped you make a better decision, and taught you more about the radios. If you're worried about sound and EQ, they're the same. If you're worried about the extra features like the gauges or the Sirius XM or boom amp retention, that's the major add-on. And I really think the part that's very valuable is that amp retention for you boom audio guys. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars with new amps and speakers. And I expect with this EQ to make those systems sound better than they've ever sounded before by doing that radio swap out. So I hope this video has informed you. I hope it's helped you to make a better decision. And I thank you so much for watching. I thank you for following Volunteer Audio. If you don't already do that, please subscribe to the channel. I'll keep you up to date on all of this. And as always, when you order from Volunteer Audio, you get a two-year warranty because we're authorized dealers. We give you free shipping. And we always send out the latest software in the radio so you don't have to try to do that software update once you get it. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a blessed day. And God bless.